Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Uh, it's been a long time trying to get a hold of one of these. After last year, uh, extended test of the Desert Tech MDR, which I just uh, thought was an amazing bullpup ambidextrous carbine. I uh, had it in 7.62. I just thought, well, man, I really need to test a Caltech RDB uh, in 5.56. Some things I'm looking forward to is to see if it's uh, lighter and then also to see if it can uh, at least come close to matching the perfect mirroring of the Desert Tech MDR. So we have it uh, here. We're we'll do our initial unboxing. It's uh, have a 20 inch barrel in this version here. And uh, here we got their, they include a copy of their catalog, a really uh, nice glossy catalog to look at. And as I look through this, I'm kind of surprised to go, wow, I actually have quite a few of these. I have a Caltech PF9, awesome little 9mm pistol, very lightweight, uh, very small, pocketable for a 9mm come out in 2006 was ahead of its day and is still competitive triggers long and a little bit you know it's a double action trigger this is a hammer fired pistol so it is a you know not as easy as some of the strike modern striker fired ones but still nothing it nothing else comes close to the weight uh, this is about five to six ounces lighter than everything else and then also the uh, here we have the I have a Caltech P17 here in our Forge Tech holster. A 22 pistol, very lightweight. Paddle magazine release, which is awesome. Awesome pistol. I uh, just re recently re released a review on this and uh, definitely should be in every household. And then a long time old favorite of ours is the Caltech SU-16, which we have here mounted with the tech sights and not much else. Not even a flash hider. The Eminent Backpack Rifle. Reviews on that are also available at amgun.com and I'll include links in the description. So, anyway, browsing through this catalog, I see that I've got a long relationship with these guys and didn't really even hardly realize it. Okay, we've got uh, you know an abundance of stickers here. I really like their uh, really like their new low sticker. It looks much nicer, I think. Uh, there's the uh, the conventional flag sticker, and then also they have the uh, uh, white with the clear Caltech sticker as well. It comes with a uh, a 20 round P mag. And I really like uh, 20 rounds. I think uh, I do have some 30 round magazines, but I like 20 rounds for keeping the weight off the rifle when you are shooting or gunfighting. Okay, so also includes with a, a nylon sling. Eh, I'm probably not going to use that. Maybe use that webbing for something else, strap something down or something. I like uh, old school canvas. Uh, slings for using in Project Apple Seed Rifle Marksmanship Clinics. More is used as a shooter sling, support sling than anything else. Now, comes this is the 20 inch barrel, it's a flash hider on the end, very compact rifle, ambi safety. I like how that goes up into kind of where it's protected and yet uh, you can easily reach it and and click it off safe I can tell that already and but not interfere with the other side a lot of safeties uh, because of the angle their position like the ARs when you put ambi safeties on them they they uh, interfere with your they get in the way on the other side and so it comes a little bit of an obstruction I have the ambidextrous magazine release here very uh, unique, uh, uh, clever design for a magazine release. Uh, Mike, wondering is if um, uh, I think that's going to be fine, but it looks like uh, kind of wondering if that's going to interfere with my technique for transitions on a bullpup rifle. Well, we'll find out. Uh, really, very, very much like the downward ejection. 
Uh, that really just solves the, you know, not getting smacked in the face with the cases as they're ejected if you're sh shooting left or right. Uh, the Desert Tech MDR did the, kind of had this process where it was ejecting forward and that worked well as also, but um, downward ejecting I think is gonna be a little bit better. Okay, we've got the charging handle here for operating as if you're shooting right-handed. Uh, this is the one spot where the kel does not uh, do perfect mirroring like the MDR did. The MDR had uh, charging handles on both sides so you could run the, the, the rifle without thinking on whether you're shooting left-handed or right-handed, which is where you want to get if you want to be an ambidextral gunfighter. But anyway, nice charging handle, folds down way out of the way. We'll be mounting a, a, a Trigicon ACOG on this, uh, or the ACOG that we've uh, castrated. We remove those big giant nuts, which is going to be important if we're running the charging handle back across along the side of that ACOG. Okay, so before we even head out to the range, I always like to clean off the preservative, the uh, rust preservative, uh, so-called lubrication that comes from the factory, and apply simple or uh, Sentry Solutions Tough Glide. Now I'll be cleaning with uh, hops number nine, and then with just some simple green to kind of degrease it. And uh, we'll also be using our marine tough cloth here as well from Sentry Solutions. Now that's a little bit unconventional, but they do say that you can use any commercially available gun solvent or gun oil. Well, this is the commercially available uh, gun oil, so I guess that counts, even though it is, is a dry lubricant and maybe not quite conventional. The reason is it really smooths things out, in my opinion, and then also reduces any uh, accumulation of you know, sand, grime, dust, dirt that sticks to wet oils, wet lubricants. And then also, uh, the Century Solutions allows, uh, once you've got it coated pretty good, and then you go shoot, uh, the cleanup just seems to be much easier. You just wipe off everything with a dry towel, and then use Century Solutions uh, with their tough cloth to kind of refresh the coat. So, we start with the field strip here. Now, the uh, it's, I like how they've done the, these, these have these captive pins here and they're uh, notice how they're kind of shaped a little bit uh, got the little divot and them dip inside of them that helps you identify that these are the pins that you remove rather than some of these other uh, pins and screws and whatnot now these are captive so they actually push through from the opposite side from the left side out to the right side and so we'll use a uh, a punch here. You could use, I suppose, a bullet tip once these pins have kind of loosened up a bit. But they're going to probably be a little bit stiff since this is a brand new rifle. Oh, not too bad at all. And uh, and then we're also removing this one and this one here. This one here in the back, we can remove that later if we need to dissemble further, but it's these two that basically release the, the grip frame. Okay, see we've got the two, well, it was captive, there. Sort of captive. Easily to make them not captive, but there they are. Now they're captive. So now I think this kind of pulls down the grip frame. There we go. There's a little bit of spring tension. And now we've got the the pistol grip and kind of the the lower I guess you'd say and the trigger group there uh, removed from the RDB. We'll set that aside for now. Perhaps look at that later. Okay now here we got the what looks more like a conventional starting to look a little bit like a bolt carrier group. This is a piston driven carbine. So now we basically have our bolt carrier group here with, uh, I guess that's the recoil spring. And, um, and then the barrel with the foregrip. So it's kind of cool that uh, 
our Picatinny rail kind of stays with the barrel, so we're not messing with anything as far as uh, our zero. Once we get her zeroed, here we can see the uh, chamber. It looks a very AR-ish type lock up there. So let's go to the uh, bolt carrier group here and we'll do the disassembly of this. And this is very, um, very AR-like. We have this little uh, firing pin, the retaining pin for the firing pin that lets the firing pin drop out. And then this, um, I forget what they call that on the AR, but the pin that bolt, the bolt retaining pin, I guess you'd say. Now notice that the, this, uh, retaining pin for the bolt has a flat on the one side of it so when we reassemble it we have to make sure we put that flat back where it goes there so let's start you notice the uh, right now the firing pin can protrude out the back of the bolt carrier group it's held in place by that pin there so we'll start by just pressing that firing pin retaining pin out and like most like ARs we have the little kind of a little rubber washer or o-ring there on it that helps that retains that into place so it just doesn't fall out but it's also once it's in place and it's inside the action it's not going to fall out so now that allows the firing pin to come out straight back notice again we've got this flat side of the firing pin flat part there also facing towards the top of the rifle so that's going to come out now we can remove this the bolt retaining pin and get that to fall out here it looks very similar to an AR just doesn't the AR has it you know kind of like a lever on top of it and now our bolt is free to remove from the bolt carrier group so let's start with uh, cleaning these parts with some hops number nine it's gonna make things smell really good and I, I've got all the windows shut in because I'm filming and I don't want excess light or improper light to come in or excess noise so this is probably going to be a I'll probably get a little bit of a buzz from this today so I'll clean the bolt get all that preservative oil get it off of the locking lugs and I suspect it's probably been test fired at the factory so there may be a little bit of uh, fouling just spreading hops number nine all around just to let it start dissolving fouling as well as break down the oils and we'll once we've done this with the hops I'll do it with the simple green to just totally degrease and remove all of that preservative from the factory I'm going to do this cleaning rod here. I'm just not sure if that comes out or not. If I got a pin up there in the front, we'll definitely do, have to do this, some of this with the Q-tips to get inside of it. Firing pin, bolt, bolt head retaining pin. Firing pin, retaining pin. I think I've got some hops number nine on everything now. We'll do a little, get some on a Q-tip to get up in that uh, the bolt carrier itself. I know a lot, most people just uh, get the guns from the factory and just take them right out just with whatever lubrication and, and test them that way. I just think it's better to clean off this factory lube and run Sentry Solutions for a good, honest test. Okay, we'll let that set for a bit. 
Now let's start dry wiping these the bolt carrier group parts. See if we can get into that firing pin channel. I always like to check the firing pin channel or if it's a striker fired firearm, the uh, striker channel. Sometimes I've found a little bit of metal shavings inside of it. Now we'll use a Q-tip to dry out the bolt carrier. Okay, that seems pretty good. Now we'll set these uh, bolt carrier group parts just aside for a few seconds while we take a look at our barrel, pick rail, and foregrip. Now again, we have a, a uh, captive pin here with a nice little divot to help identify that's the pin we want to come out, but it comes out towards the right. So let's see if we can push that out by hand. Put a little support under it here. And just a little hand hammer, and that got it. Didn't take much. Okay, let's see if I can push that out and keep it be captive. There we go, felt it click in place. So now that should come off. Looks like it just angles down and then kind of rotates out and off. So, so there's the foregrip. So if you get one of those uh, third party foregrips, that's how you remove that and replace that. It's a nice lightweight piece of plastic. One thing I've noted is that the plastic on this, the, or let's say polymer, polymer sounds better than plastic. Uh, the polymer uh, uh, looks, to me, looks and feels different than a lot of the other Caltech uh, firearms. This feels almost like it's got a, a different composition, like maybe a little bit rubbery feel to it, and just feels a little more re robust than, for example, like the P17 or the PF9. But uh, not that I've had any trouble with those, but it's, this just does feel a little more, a little more substantial or something. All right, so here we can see, you can see we've got uh, basically the barrel, our flash hider, which at some point I'm going to take that off and we'll do some comparisons of this 20-inch barrel without a flash hider versus a 16-inch barrel on our um, BCM and see if, uh, you know, our flash hider is worth it. Would I rather have the added barrel length, which is my hypothesis, than have a flash hider on a shorter barrel? So let's just uh, we'll go through this and and uh, do a little hops number nine to just get any of the preservative off of the barrel. And this will be just for, we're going to put the Sentry Solutions on there, and that the Sentry Solutions in this case is not going to be so much a you know, lubricant as it is a, a rust preventative, but a rust preventative that won't attract dirt. So that's what this is all about. Uh, we'll get in here to the chamber. Let's uh, wetten the Q-tip so we can get down in there. And just make sure we've got all these locking lugs cleaned out so that when I put the Sentry Solutions on there, it gets a good, it adheres to the metal better. That's supposedly the theory is that Sentry Solutions kind of bonds with the metal. I don't know if that's completely true. I suppose it bonds a little bit more so than your standard uh, wet lube which just kind of flows around everywhere. But All right so now let's just just for we'll run uh, let's now let's wipe off all this hops number nine off of the surface of the barrel. 
off of the flash hider. Oh, here we go. Here's something else I can disassemble and do something with. Not sure what this part is called. It's got, oh, it's got the charging handle that you can move from one side to the other. Hmm. I'm gonna look at that at some point and maybe wonder if we couldn't, if something like this couldn't be made that like the MDR where you had am, truly ambidextrous charging handles and not just one where you can switch it from one side to the other. That's what I would really like to see. Uh, it gives us access to kind of clean under the pick rail. We can see this uh, gas piston there. And something I've really impressed with just looking at this is the adjustable gas system. Uh, it's very easy to work with. That was one thing with the MDR. It was like kind of a bitch to get to and really stiff. And you've got a lot of positions on this, a lot of adjustability. So I think we're going to better really uh, tune this thing in. And I did see that Chad Enos has a video, Chad Enos of, of Caltech, uh, has a video that shows you how to dial in your gas system. So we'll, we'll definitely be doing that at some point. Okay, now we'll look at drying. Removing all of the, any remaining hops number nine. And I'm gonna call that done for the hops number nine part of the treatment, at least until we get to the, the trigger group. So now let's run a bore snake through it just a couple times. Well, before we put the start, even start on the tough glide, I'm gonna do the simple green on this barrel. Spray some simple green on a cloth. This is a pretty good degreaser. Should remove any oily residue. Okay, that appears to be degreased. Let's get this piece here, the charging handle, the bolt carrier group a little more simple green this bolt carrier we add it while we got the simple green going we'll do the the bolt head get those locking lugs degreased Firing pin, retainer for the firing pin, and the, well that was the retainer for the bolt, and this is the retainer for the firing pin. Okay, so now we'll re kind of reverse, we're gonna do this Sentry Solutions start with the uh, charging handle. And there's no spots really on that that at this point that I need a Q-tip, but we'll use the tough cloth to wipe off the excess and kind of absorb the excess into the cloth. So we'll kind of reuse it. We'll get a little bit, I'm gonna shoot a little bit in here and then use a Q-tip to kind of wipe it out. Now, Sentry Solutions is a dry lubricant that's carried on there with mineral spirits. So the mineral spirits actually makes a decent uh, a cleaner as well. So you can think of it kind of as like, kind of like CLP, but with a dry lubricant. Okay. We have Sentry Solutioned that. Now so we'll just get uh, the rust preventative coating on the barrel and, and then again, spread and 
remove the excess with the tough cloth. Yeah, I use the tough cloth to wipe it off of the pick rail. Um, before we actually mount the optic, I'm going to want to probably degrease that a bit, but I do want to, it does have probably steel screws holding the rail on, so I'm going to make sure they got a little bit of preservative on them. Now let's add a little bit into the barrel, the chamber locking lugs. And we'll use a Q-tip to kind of distribute and remove the excess from that. And get the ramps lubricated around that rim there inside the chamber and spread a little bit down the chamber. Now we'll go back to the our boar snake. I'll put a little bit of Sentry Solutions on the tail of the snake. And we'll drop the snake down through the barrel. And then kind of slowly pull it through. There we go. Call that, we're going to call the barrel done. So at this point we can, just to kind of reduce our clutter, we will put the foregrip back on the barrel. Remember we have the retaining captive pin there, our charging handle. So I guess that went like that, right? Yeah. <coughs> Okay, now, there we go. Charging handle in place. Now we can do this the proper way. Engage the pins there on the riser for the pick rail. Rotate up. Once it kind of bottoms out, you can now push this pin back in place. There. Now the foregrip and barrel are complete. Now we can go to the bolt carrier group. We have Century Solutions tough cloth here on the mat to capture any overspray. That's really the, the kind of the extension, I guess, of the gas piston system. it go ahead and just get the bolt carrier group or the bolt head firing pin bolt retaining pin firing retaining pin and we can set the central solutions aside for a second and now we'll use the tough cloth to spread and remove any excess okay we need a little bit Get some Sentry Solutions up into the boat the carrier for the boat where it's going to ride. And then also where that uh, the, the bolt head pin will be shifting around. Get some lubrication on its channel. Okay, now we can begin reassembly of the bolt carrier group. Here is the top of the rifle. Here is our bolt head. We see we've got our two pins there that I guess are our ejector pins and then the ejector on this side. Go ahead and just kind of clean that bolt face just up a little bit with the Sentry Solutions. There we go. So, ejector is going to come down on that side. Oh, I'm thinking of a conventional rifle here, aren't I? This is going to eject downward. So the ejectors will be, ejector pins will be up on top. Je ejector itself will be on the bottom. Wow. Have to kind of change your thinking, thinking here. Okay, so there's the bolt in the bolt carrier. So you've got the hole lined up there. Now we'll insert the... Um, 
the bolt head retaining pin. Remember we have the flat piece there. Get there, we can see that. That faces up. So we'll insert that in there just like that. Basically that's got to be flat so it runs flush on that rail there. Now we can insert our firing pin, wipe off any excess sentry solutions. And again, just like that uh, bolt head retaining pin, the flat portion needs to go up. And up is towards where the gas rod is. So we'll insert it in the firing pin channel. And then we move it to where you can see that flat piece goes slots into that hole there and then we can insert the retaining pin if so I can rotate this over without causing it to spin here do it from this side got the flat up insert it in to where that retaining pin will engage it push the pin in place push it down to where it's flush and that o-ring has kind of secured it Make sure it does the firing pin does not fall out. Bolt head moves properly for unlocking. Firing pin also is contained, but yet can can project out the uh, front of the bolt head there. Okay, so now we'll finish just giving this another wipe down with the tough cloth. I'm thinking at some point I'll look at probably this disassemble somehow so we can get this spring and stuff out and we'll work on that too but for now we're gonna call this good let's set that aside and let's go look put our attention to the trigger on this and just dry firing this can already say that this has a uh, really amazing trigger now I could take this pin out here and then pull this uh, the buttstock there all the way off let's see if we can actually get to what we need to get to under here eh, let's go ahead and do that so we can just apply some let's go ahead and take this off okay again we got our captive pin pull it out till it clicks and then this just slides off like that so now what we're going to do, again, I'm going to set the trigger group aside. We're just going to kind of clean up this housing here. Um, again, we're going to start with our hops number nine, just to clean any oil from out underneath this metal housing. Okay, we'll let that set for a second and let's take a look at what we have here in the uh, the trigger group let's just kind of wipe things out here I'm gonna wipe it down a little bit with hops it's an interesting interesting design okay so let's get a q-tip with some hops and just kind of wipe out some of this stuff down in this trigger group because we want it to be as degreased as possible and then apply Sentry Solutions. Yeah, it has a really, really nice trigger. Uh, and as did the, the De Desert Tech MDR. Been really impressed with the, the Desert Tech and so far with the RDB. So the actual trigger group up is here. Looks so like we have some kind of transfer bars back here. And this must be like the hammer. Okay, to get a little bit behind, I'm going to again go to my trusty ambidextral gunfighter business card here. We're going to cut strips of that and go in behind these transfer bars. Although they, they do stay pretty much away from the frame, it appears. So I don't think it's going to be a big issue, but just to be sure, we're going to cut some of these strips off. And we're going to try to clean behind there a little bit with, uh, with some hops. I'll dip my a sliver of my business card into some hops. And we'll go in behind these these transfer bars I believe that's what they are I'm assuming that has to do with the firing 
run operating, and I'm assuming this is a hammer. Uh, it's really ailing to me. I should have uh, looked at the exploded view a little more. Okay, it didn't really come out uh, very dirty, so at least there wasn't any fouling down there. Let's start wiping this out with a dry towel. Get off, remove that hops. Usually with a lot of, of uh, pistols, I found that uh, cleaning behind these transfer bars, especially on pistols, uh, really uh, you know, got a little bit of fouling out of that one, that side. But uh, keeping them clean and then using the dry lubricant behind them so they don't pick up dust and dirt that starts making everything gritty really helps out. So now we're just going to go through and do kind of a a kind of a wild little bit of spraying of Sentry solutions on all this stuff and then I'm going to just let that flow a bit and we're going to cut another strip off my my ambidextral gunfighter business card any business card will work but an ambidextral gunfighter business card will work better okay so now we've got a little bit of Sentry Solutions on this business card. I'll use it to wipe in behind these transfer bars just to get a coat of that on all those transfer bars, both for rust preventative and then preservation. But also, uh, if it is dragging on any points here, there are some like little standoffs that it will uh, provide some lubrication, but yet not attract dust. That's the key message I want to keep repeating here. Dry lubricant means less accumulation of dust and grime and carbon buildup. Okay, now I'm going through with the dry Q-tip and just getting off any excess of that. And we'll use our Sentry Solutions cloth to get some of this as well. Wipe these, a little preservative Sentry solutions on these takedown pins. And shoot a little bit on a Q tip. And then we'll just see if we can't get a little bit into this trigger group. At this point, it's I'm still. Like I said, first time tearing this down, so it's a little, definitely gonna be people better at it. So you may be, may find, have found yourself watching the wrong video. <laughs> I think I got a handle on it though. I think I do. All right. Call that trigger group done. So we'll set that aside for a minute. We'll go back here to this, uh, the cover I guess buttstock and cover wipe all that hops number nine that we had kind of soaking there get rid of some of this debris trash let's clean up our workspace now let's do let's just this is mainly just to as a rust preservative I guess. I mean, it looks like it's not going to have any rust issues. But we'll just have to make sure everything's covered with Century Solutions. They really need to sponsor me, sponsor this channel or something. How many times have I mentioned Century Solutions in all my videos? A lot of them. All right. I think we're done for now with the Sentry Solutions. Workspace cleanup again. Get rid of the hops. It doesn't need to be in our way. So now we can replace this. Well, that was easy. Pin just popped right in there, nice and easy peasy. Bolt carrier group, bolt head extended so it can engage the locking lugs there. 
that will kind of maybe hold that in place while we assemble this got this lifted up so the grip frame is kind of angled down like we did in this disassembly it's going to engage with uh, that piston long piston rod is going to engage way back there so let's see if we can hit that spot It looks like we've engaged that piston rod where it needs to go. That metal cover plate. Let's see how do I? If I okay, I push it again. I'm pushing the muzzle against the wall here. I'm holding the butt stock in to hold it that in position, and I believe this is going to work. Maybe. Got a pin binding up there. Pins in the way. Okay. There. I think we got it. I think. Yeah. Got the I got this pin started. And I think I got this pin started a little bit too. So I'm thinking that at this point maybe I can kind of hand hammer these in. Yeah. There. Alright. Yeah, I think I know. I think that's the way to do it. Is kind of push the muzzle up against the wall while you kind of position this cover plate on there. And I think we're golden. Let's do a, a quick uh, kind of a function check here. Um, so I'm gonna work the charging handle even though it is already cocked. Take the safety, let's check, uh, check that it doesn't fire. It's on, put it on safe. And uh, okay, safe is working. Take it off, it's in the fire position. That's a freaking amazing trigger. Um, all right, and so that is uh, that is the field strip and clean and lube with Century Solutions drill that I've worked out for the Caltech RDB. Uh, we'll be uh, definitely featuring this throughout the summer. And at the ambidextral gunfighter proving grounds. This is going to be interesting. Now, now what I do next is okay, we've got the weapon cleaned and lubed to our standards. We've got our Sentry Solutions in there. Now, I don't have for now for doing manual of arm stuff. Now I don't have uh, some dummy rounds so I can practice like chambering, working the boat, just getting utterly, totally familiar with the operation of this rifle. But I do have a, a 5.56 or 2.23 training laser. It's one of those lasers that has a kind of like a, a um, snap cap, except this snap cap in fires a beam of of a laser beam and you can see where your hits are so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can't get that snap cap in this rifle so I can uh, kind of because uh, our next step is going to be to mount our ACOG okay this is uh, I don't think I want to just I could maybe put this in a magazine and then chamber it that way I'm just not sure how much abuse this can take against the feed ramp. So I don't want to damage my laser. So I'm going to lock the bolt back. And we'll turn it over. And we can see down there, we can see the chamber. Hands down in there. So I can just get it to kind of fall into place and then get it to drop. Okay, it's kind of at the chamber. So we can just... There we go. All right, you see it fell into place. So now I'll kind of just not slam it, but gently drop the slide on it and kind of get it to hammer home a few times. Let's see if this, if this works. Here we got the muzzle. There we go, laser. So that's gonna be our next step uh, is to do some practice with our laser, kind of do a little bit of our manual of arms on it become familiar with how we're going to operate this left and right handed um, and uh, operate and we'll use the laser also to help at least kind of like bore sight our rifle 
Okay, now we're ready to mount the ACOG. Now what I've done is I've tried several positions and what I want to get is where when I am in my turkey neck cheek weld, as far forward as I can get with a turkey neck cheek weld, I have a full field of view through my ACOG. Okay, I believe I found the spot for that for me. And a lot of people get their scopes mounted too far to the rear and you're kind of reverse turkey necking when you do that. Now the reason you want a turkey neck cheek weld as much forward as you can with your your face you get you get your cheek weld down here tied on the stock is one it's something that's very repeatable one it's something that's very repeatable and then two uh, it allows if your head is extended all the way forward up behind as much as it can go when the rifle recoils your head is going to move back with the rifle so you're not going to get the the scope bite Okay, so now we've got on this uh, ACOG, I've gone ahead in the position I want, at least I think that's where I want it. And I'm going to kind of put a little tension forward so that's engaging the forward, uh, the back side of this, these ledges here. So pushing forward on it so that when the rifle recoils, there's not slack. So I want that forward and then I'll tighten down the nuts on here or snug them up a bit. Now notice that uh, this came off, uh, we had this, we're using it on the MDR, we've used it on my BCM Recce, and it's, this is a freaking amazing optic. Uh, it's lightweight, it's like half the weight of all these LPVOs, and, uh, and yet it's, it's four power, at least this one's four power. Um, it's just awesome, an awesome optic. Now, the reason, remember, of if you've seen my other video, I'll put a link about it in the description. The ACOG comes with these huge, huge thumb nuts. And that's so that people don't, you know, over tight, over torque it, these uh, clamps. And that's, a lot of people do. But if you are careful with not over torquing it, get rid of those big thumb nuts. You have to cut the studs back a bit. And then you get a five millimeter steel uh, flange nut to mount, to hold it in place. Now the reason for that is because especially on these bullpup rifles uh, where you've got the charging handles here on the side, when you come back you don't want those big nuts obstructing your progress. And even here I'm catching those nuts a little bit. Man, they just really need to come up with a way to get those flush in, in that mount. I mean there's a lot of people that make third party mounts for the ACOG but nobody makes anything that's got a flush, the, the nuts are flush. I mean, it needs to be flush just like it is on this side. See how nice and flush that is? I may end up, just for that reason, may end up moving the charging handle over to the other side so that it's on the flush side. I have no, you know, ambidextrous. Ideally, we'd have it on both sides, but at least I think we're, we may be clear. We'll just have to try it and see how it works out in actual practice, but at least we're not got those big giant nuts out of the way, so definitely an improvement. So now I'm going to just kind of snug these up just a little bit. I don't want to over torque them. Pick rail doesn't take much. Just might have to. These are uh, I think have nylon lock locking inserts on them. Uh, otherwise, I might use some uh, put a drop of Loctite on it. So. I think we have her mounted up. You can do a turkey neck cheek weld. And we'll see that I've got a full field of view through that lovely optic. I think it's good to go. So next step is to, we'll get an approximate, uh, you know, at least get it to where it's on paper. We're gonna sight it in or bore sight it with that training laser. So what I'll do is I'll set up a a uh, project apple seed cider squares and we're going to do it uh, we're going to do it at about uh, 12 10 10 yards i guess and so we'll, we'll we'll at least get it to where it's about right and then we'll finish sighting it in at the firing range okay we're ready to sight in with our our training laser as a using it as a bore sighter so we've got our Project Appleseed target set up. Turkey neck cheek weld. I use the bottom because we're 
I mean, I'm actually pretending I'm at 25 meters, so I'll use the, but we're only about 10 meters away. So we want it to be a little bit low, but I'm gonna use the bottom of the chevron. At 25 meters, I want this at 25 and at about 300, and the bottom of the chevron on the ACOG is the 300. So I use the 300 chevron to my point of impact. Okay, it looked uh, pretty low there. So let's get us a, a group, a laser group, just to make sure I wasn't anticipating a lot of recoil from that laser. Okay, looks like it's dead on as far as windage, but a little bit low. One more for a three shot group. Okay. Yeah, so let's see uh, how many minutes of angle, make an estimate of that, and we'll bring it up. We do want it to be a little bit low, so I'm going to bring it up to where it'll be at about the bottom of that middle square. All right, so based on our laser hits, I estimated that it was about eight of those quarter inch squares below where I want it to hit. Now, at the range I'm at, I'm normally at... Uh, 25 meters that would be uh, simply eight minutes of angle at the range I'm at I'm guesstimating that maybe those are probably each one of those are probably uh, two minutes of angle so um, I went uh, for two to gain two minutes of angle on my ACOG I come up approximately each each click on this is about uh, a half a minute of angle so I bring this up eight clicks and then we fire, fire again. Perfect, dead on. That's definitely gonna get us on paper when we go with live ammo out at the range.